Gardening celebrities often say, get your soil tested. But does soil knowledge really mean more plant power? As your friendly plant scientist, I decided to investigate soil testing. I'll compare a do-it-yourself-at-home soil test kit and a test from a certified soil testing laboratory. Will the results match? But before we get there, what's the point of soil testing? Typically, you test the pH and the nutrient levels in your soil. Let's first talk pH. Most plants prefer soil within a neutral pH range, 6 to 7.5. That means soil that's not really acidic or alkaline. Neutral soil makes it easier for plants to absorb much needed nutrients from the soil. As always, there are exceptions. Some plants are adapted to survive in acidic soil. Rhododendrons, blueberries and heathers all love soil that's acidic. Once you know your soil's pH, you can adjust it. To make your soil more acidic, add sulphur. To make your soil more alkaline, add lime or wood ash. Fingers crossed, my soil has a neutral pH for growing a wide range of plants. Let's find out soon. On to soil nutrients. Just like us, plants need a lot of some nutrients called macronutrients. Think nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, and some nutrients in much smaller quantities. These are called micronutrients. Micronutrients are elements like zinc, iron, sodium, nickel, and copper. Like Goldilocks porridge, soil nutrition needs to be just right. A lack of nutrients will limit plant growth, and too much of any one nutrient can be toxic to plants, and can also stop the plant from taking up other nutrients. Generally, home DIY soil test kits only test for pH and a few macronutrients, whereas laboratory soil tests check for pH and a far wider range of macro and micronutrients. More on these soil tests in a moment. So we've covered pH and nutrients. Now, let's collect the soil for my two tests the home soil test kit and the laboratory soil test. Remember, your soil test results will only be as good as your collected soil sample. So take your soil samples from areas where you grow your plants and don't sample areas you've recently put manure or fertilizer on or you'll muddy your results. In this case, I'm testing the soil from my new allotment. If you can only test one soil sample, you can collect a composite sample. A composite sample means combining the soil from multiple areas on one growing site to cover the whole growing area. Take your composite sample from a W shape. So, imagine a large W drawn across your site and sample at points along the lines of the imaginary W. Move aside anything that's not soil. Dig down into the plant root zone about 30 centimetres or a foot. I find it easiest to dig a small hole, then use my spade to cut a thin slice from one side of the hole. I can then sample a top to bottom profile section of the soil from one edge of the spade. Also, think about the timing of your soil test. If you sample your soil in the autumn, you can amend your soil over the winter to fix any problems you may have discovered. Now, back to those soil tests. First, the home soil test kit bought from my local garden centre. This do-it-yourself home soil test kit cost £30 or about $40. US dollars. This test can give me results in less than 45 minutes. I also send off the same soil for analysis by a UK soil laboratory. This lab test cost me about £40 or about $50. US dollars. The lab will email me the results in about two weeks. Both tests measure soil pH and potassium and phosphorus, two macronutrients. And, as I mentioned earlier, the lab test also checks for a much larger range of other nutrients. The home soil test kit also measures soil nitrogen levels. However, testing for nitrogen in the soil is known to be inaccurate. Should I already be sceptical then? The lab test is hopefully an accurate reflection of my soil. After all, a certified soil laboratory is as good as one can get. But does the home soil test kit compare? 
time for the big soil test reveal. I've put the results on the screen from the home test kit and the laboratory test. My reaction? Thankfully, my soil seems to have generally sufficient nutrient levels. But, honestly, I am a little disappointed by the home soil test kit. I'm really not impressed. The results between the two tests are too different. On the positive side, both tests show a similar pH, a fairly neutral pH level, which is great news for growing a wide range of plants, like we discussed earlier. But the home test kit's other findings don't appear to be worth the money or the time spent on the kit. The home soil test showed almost no nitrogen, but is that true? The tall nettles and the healthy weeds on my allotment suggest a reasonable nitrogen level. As I mentioned earlier, the lab test doesn't include nitrogen, so there's no comparison. Phosphorus in the soil is measured as sufficient in the home kit, but high in the lab test. And potassium was depleted in the home test, but normal in the lab test. The lab test also gave me additional useful results and actions I can take to adjust my soil nutrient levels for optimal plant growth. For example, the laboratory test team suggested a sulfur-based fertilizer because my soil sulfur levels are very low. So, overall, are DIY soil test kits worth it? My home test kit was ultimately inaccurate. Worse still, if I saw the home test kit as truth, I'd have taken unnecessary and potentially harmful actions, such as adding to my soil too much potassium-based fertilizer. So ultimately, does soil knowledge help you grow better plants? It depends. If your plants seem healthy and productive, then you probably don't need to test your soil, unless you're just curious. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, if you notice on your plants yellowing leaves, purple discoloration, or stunted growth, then yes, soil testing is worth it. And from what we've learned together, if you want to test your soil, don't use a possibly inaccurate home soil test kit. Instead, send a soil sample to a certified lab. Always remember that old saying, trust but verify. Wishing you healthy plants and happy gardening.